This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time, get Don't give up what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time, get Still, I think you meant shots. All right. Let's do a show. This is 644. And, and Dave, I don't eat Snickers because fuck that. Kit Kats are where it's at. You stop that. What are you? Oh, what is going on today? Geez. This is, yeah. he, he's Mad Mike. This is Mad Mike being Mad Mike. This is the gimmick, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Kit Kats. Okay. I'm going to say the right number this week, guys. Did you say the wrong one last week? I said the week? wrong number last week. This is why I, we need a fucking producer. I stepped it up. I I I, I kind of kicked up a a week. Oh wait, can we say it's the same number as you said last week? But remix. Wrestling Mayhem Show said producer Missy is about to open a can of whoop ass on Mad Mike. Why am I not seeing this, Missy? Just think, um, all the Snickers I don't eat in the world. Mm. There are more Snickers for you to consume. Good note. Hey guys, it's the Wrestling Mayhem Show 644 Tuesdays. We've been celebrate, celebrating professionalized wrestling. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And we got the crew with us. We got a hell of a show. It's a mystery show. I don't know what we're talking about. I kind of have a list. We'll see where the world take a, takes us. The world of wrestling takes us. Because with us we have, first of all, from Poo. Kipsy, New York. He is the only... Nope, nope, that's not it. There it is. He is the only mayhemer with a future Endeavor letter from the WWE. He is mad. Mike? Coconut and Snickers are terrible. Fight me, internet. I will. <laughs> oh. oh, no. Also with us is Larry. Hey. Of, of, he, lives, he works in the basement. I do. I work in the basement. And he's going to give us an amazing plug for what he does in the basement at the end of the show because I completely prepped him for it last week. Did you? I gave you a, like I just kind of yelled at you about what you do. We'll talk about this okay. over the break. Oh yeah, apparently. Also <laughs> with us, he is back on the show. He is the first ever Rise Wrestling Grand Champion. <laughs> That's not the that's I'm not sorry. the heel face we practice. What is this bobblehead shit you're doing right now? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> that is a gift somewhere along the line. Lee Moriarty is with us this week. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. No That's problem. like a slow motion D'Lo Brown. What? <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Oh, you got the wobble. You got the. You still wobble. Yeah. Still wobbling. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, I I see a delayed video feed in the in the back of Sorg. So yes. it me. Uh, but of course, you know, getting ready for the Rise Wrestling Anniversary Show this week with Derek Direction. Finally, you guys are going to settle it. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, look. <laughs> We'll also check in on your lion face. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's making motions. He's making motions. That's a very... Ang- <laughs> I think your opponent just chopped in the chat, Did too. Did lose sound? No, no, no. He's making, oh. He's making like... He's pantomiming the, the, the things. I'm trying okay. to... Um, for the audio, he's, he's making a cutting motion. I... <laughs> Anyways, we'll, we'll we'll have more miming with Lee here in a little bit. But in the meantime, please go check out everything at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, you can uh, uh, go there to find links and subscribe to us in podcast or video form. Or look us up on your favorite platform uh, in as a podcast or video. Uh, you can also email us at that address. Good times. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Accept you solicitors. Go away. Uh, also, hit us up at... Oh, okay, not the, the, the automated solicitors. If you actually have some business, like let's talk about something. But still, like because <laughs> the guys that want me to read your article that has nothing to do with pro wrestling and link it to my articles that have everything to do with wrestling, stop it. Uh, anyways, or you can call us at 412-206-WMS0. Or somebody called us in Japanese one time. I don't know what they were selling me. If somebody knows... I, I think it was Japanese. 
That was me sort of. If you're an Asian language expert, please um, email me at goodtimes at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and let's talk so I can figure out what's going on. Uh, at Mayhem Show, Facebook page, and group for the Wrestling Mayhem Show. A lot of great discussion. And you know when we go live. And that's the chat room we do follow. Because right? we do go here live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on the Facebook Live. And we're also on other platforms on uh, the Sorgatron Media, Periscope, and Twitch, and uh, Mixer, and some other platforms. So if you're seeing us over there on the live feed, please hop over here uh, to the Facebook page where we do have the live chat going on. A lot of discussions. Uh, like our friends uh, Alex Alex and Alex Allen, California. Tina up in the Seattle area. Dave Potter of the Tiny Shutter Podcast uh, here in the Pittsburgh area. And, of course, pr- producer Missy joining us uh, from Sorgatron Media West out there in California as well. Um, also, you can uh, hit us up if... Nope, nope, not that. Patreon.com. Thank you, everybody that supports us at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Sorry, I have a new like window format trying to follow along the show here and i'm i'm still adjusting uh thank you to our fan, our friends and fans that are following us or uh, contributing at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show including our friends at the fan of the show one dollar level the longest running one bo diggity Woo! ed burke bobby fj towns tina keys and the matthew and jennifer carlin's foundation for co- podcast betterment and our friends at the pocky club five dollar level occupy pro wrestling christopher bishop uh bradley ruthers doc remedy and and Dave Ponder and the Pizza Club $10 level, Billy F. and Johnson. You guys can help us keep the lights on here. If you find get value out of this show and want to help it grow, go over to patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You get mayhem show gold at the $5 level it up. We talked about, well, we had a heated argument about coconut and, and Girl Scout cookies. And um, what did we talk about in the first section? I can't remember right now. <laughs> Jeff Hardy. We, Jeff we Hardy. Talked we Jeff talked about Jeff, Jeff Hardy. Hardy. And his career versus Lee Moriarty's age, and how weird that is. Yep. I guess yep. he's been wrestling probably longer than I've been alive. Yep. But he hasn't been on SmackDown longer than you've been alive. That's so true. feel better about that. There you go. There you go. He's never been the Rise Grand Champion. I don't feel bad about it. He, he I'm young. <laughs> 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 you still got a lot ahead of yeah. you. It's like good outlook. Yes, exactly uh anyways let's get into it actually i wanted to talk about of, of all things i don't i don't know if there's anything to talk about more of jeff hardy uh but daniel bryan has been interesting the last week um we kind of had like no explanation going into survivor series we had that curious match with brock lesnar at a survivor series but he explained himself and apparently um he's done gone crazy and there's a new Daniel Bryan. Um, did you any guys any you guys uh, catch this uh, promo, Mike? I, I'm sure you have. Uh, yeah, it's. Um, I don't know where we're going with this. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, like it, but, it's, but, weird. But, it's weird. What what you've been presented with so far? I I don't even know what to make of it right now. Mm-hmm. Like, because uh, now like he didn't show up on this week's SmackDown, so. They're, I don't know if they necessarily even have really? a full at fl- all. No, well, not not as of press time. Okay, but but like I don't even know if they have a full idea of what this new Daniel Bryan is right now. Um, it's it's weird. It's because I don't think it's like a crazy character. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's that. It doesn't seem like that to me. It just seems like, um, split like, personality. He's, yeah, it's just a personality change, really. Like mm-hmm. he he had a one on one match with AJ Styles, he couldn't beat him, and it seems like he was going back to when Team Hell No started. Yeah, well, like, I, I, it, like I, it almost seems like his career is literally performing an arc, mm-hmm. and he's and he's doing the same stuff like going back down the line. It, it feels a little deeper than than what he did that like he was kind of going crazy and yelling no and 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 you know, dr shelby and everything and it kind of turned into a a laugh right like it seems like it's a more serious crazy daniel bryan coming back around like well, like he's got a medical history to back it up now yeah yeah so you can see I, so yeah i mean i don't even know if it's crazy i just think it's more focused mm-hmm. and also the miz was right well mm-hmm. The Miz was right. About what? About Daniel Bryan. 
Which part about it? Want, wanting to come back and be a glory hog. Mm. Daniel Bryan is literally playing into everything the Miz has said about him. It did make me wonder if this was going to lead to a flip and we'll get a face Miz against a heel Daniel Bryan no, as a follow up to all that. Writing. I, <laughs> that, would, that would involve writing. No, in case we got the silly antics of the Miz um, trying to be Shane McMahon's best friend. I, I'm scared as to where that may lead. Yeah, yeah. I'm very scared. Um, other than that, any other thoughts on uh, Daniel Bryan or anything else going on on SmackDown over there? Um, well, the man is back. The man is back. Which did she come back tonight? Yes, she did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and Becky's cleared to wrestle. Nice. Uh, it's going to be, and they. It, I'm actually very excited. The first segment of SmackDown was. 15,000 times better than literally anything I've wrong in the past month. <laughs> that, that wasn't Becky Lynch. Well, it's not a it's not a it's not a high bar at all. Not a high bar, but no. um they're going to do Becky and Charlotte in a TLC match. Mm-hmm. Then the entire SmackDown women's roster came out and said they were pissed off mm-hmm. that none of them are getting opportunities. So Paige is like, "All right, fine. Battle Royal, winner gets added to that match to make a triple threat." And the winner So I'm hoping for Asuka or an Iconic. an Iconic. That's what I'm hoping for. That'd be nice, but I can't see them throwing an Iconic up there. after. Why they, not? You need a heel. They they both got ravaged by Charlotte a week ago. I'm thinking Mandy yeah. Rose is going to win it. Mandy Rose? Yeah. yeah. I think they're looking for a blue brand Alexa Bliss. I like Sonya. Sonya would be good. She's kind of blue brand, blue brand. Blue brand Alexa Bliss. Well, yeah, was, and Sonya's kind of blue brand Ronda Rousey, isn't she? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, but she does more than that little hip toss arm drag thing. And she could talk. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Um, so that hasn't happened yet. I think we're like. Uh, I believe that's the main event. For it's the main event for tonight. So uh, hopefully we'll get an update here during the show and what's happening there. Um, good, good. I'm glad to see that coming around and Becky getting back into it because her Twitter has been amazing the last two weeks. Um, even, oh, she's been she's been throwing shade at everybody. It's been yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I can't wait for her Seth Rollins feud. Like Becky is better with her thumbs than Ronda and Nia are with their words. <laughs> yes, accurate. Um, we also had Star Kid this weekend. <laughs> so you had an hour. You had an hour of Star You had an hour of Star Kid, and I'm kind of glad it was an only an hour. I, I'm perplexed by. We were celebrating 30 years of Starcade by running an indie show version of Starcade. Um, it, it was it was basically they had cameras at a live event. They had called the, it Starcade and called it Starcade. They did they had just had a live event and called they it did Starcade. this last year too. Last last year it was a live event. They called it Starcade. It happened in Charlotte, I think. Yep. And yep. this time it was in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, again, you know, it was the travel set, the smaller one that you see if you go to a house show. It was like the, the WWE live barriers and everything. Like the lights were definitely not the same <laughs> lights. They were actually the the audio didn't seem right. <laughs> Tina said in the chat room, Hey, did you know that Rick Flair is in the first Starcade? <laughs> Uh, I think I think Junior was saying that every five minutes, right? Uh, they were saying it in the in the event uh, on the commentary. Every five minutes too. Yeah, I turned down the audio after like that first segment because I just couldn't take it anymore. No uh, one really blames you on that. No, I mean it was an Elias segment. It was Elias and Ric Flair. I should have loved that, but it was real echoey. Um, I don't know what that says about how we're treating Starcade. Uh, but I mean, hell, they're treating it like they treated WCW. <laughs> that, that is true. That is true. Um, the guy kept talking about Harley Race and um, what, what Piper and Valentine and everything. Um, but uh, you know, we had a cage match. It, it, it was a good. It, it was Joe and AJ, so it was a good cage match. But that was about it. But and, and I don't think it was mentioned anywhere else, like on on main TV or anything, right? No, because it, it's it doesn't mean anything no but it's a nice it's nice to kind of have a spot show like that but it's just the, the starcade bit like yeah we couldn't have like had like starcade packages like look backs or something like when we have you know every year at wrestlemania <laughs> or maybe it's a nice little reminder it's like hey guys this was supposed to be their wrestlemania <laughs> here here's what it is now you know but i i don't know it, it, it it's nice that they're doing something with the name though and maybe I'll build up. Is to it? 
Is it better no, that they're doing this is. than not doing anything with Starcade ever again? Yeah, because when, really? at least when NXT brought back War Games, mm-hmm. they're doing War Games justice pretty much. Yeah. And kind of bringing it into the new era, right? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not full-on War Games, the match beyond, but, you know, it's it's NXT's version of it. Now, let's be honest. War Games, those last couple of years, were not War Games, the match beyond. Like it was real. Oh, yeah, no, they it was not. real weird and bad and ultimate warrior. What's the difference between <laughs> the old war games and this one? Just that there wasn't like a the thing roof. on top, the roof. I the are any of the rules different because they do the whole like the match doesn't begin until everybody gets out there. Um, they're kind of having these holding pens for people instead of the, like they were the, just the major difference is there's no roof on the cage. That's it. okay. That, that, well, makes, I mean, that makes it that makes it easier for Ricochet to do cool shit, and it also makes right? it easier for it to probably travel. Yeah, well, I don't know if the travel is the issue, but just like something to build. Like their war games is really elimination chamber. No, yep. no, because there's no eliminations. It's one fall to a finish. Yeah, well, yeah, but I mean, as far as like a structure and a a a not everybody spectacle. goes in at the same time. Well, yeah, like that whole it's idea. Similar, that, it's similar to it's got that rumble chamber. feel to it. It's it's got it's got that like it, it was it was you know the kind of next generation mashup of a war games and a royal rumble, right? Was I think how they they initially described it. So I don't know how much fun war games is going to be once the undisputed era, era leave NXT. Yeah, though. they're kind of making it, aren't they? Yeah. So hopefully. Well, uh, it's like the horsemen making war games back in the day. It's the same con- same concept. So wait, are you saying that that undisputed is the is the horseman yeah. of today? Yeah. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's literally the only faction besides Evolution that has done the four man faction properly. I think they even were doing Freebird rule on the belts too, which I don't even think four horsemen did that. Um, they're not doing them now. No, but they, no, they're not. They were. Well, yeah, the, I, they were because like Fish got hurt and Cole did double duty, and then Ryder came over that one night. So yeah, there was a little bit of switcheroo on that one. So, all right. Well, hey guys, um, if you want to check out some other wrestling, that's not. That's definitely better than Monday nights. Uh, go check out. Hey, check out Lee Moriarty over on the uh, Indie Wrestling US Network. That guy right there featured heavily. Actually, we can see you talked about this. Uh, put up uh, one of your matches for free last week. I think you were talking about online from the uh, February Rise show. Oh, the thirty-minute match the, with Jack Pollock. Your thirty-minute match with Jack Pollock. It went to a time limit draw. Yeah. You said that was like pretty much a milestone for you. Yeah, growing up watching Japanese wrestling, they wrestle like that. Like it's a regular 10-minute match. Mm-hmm. And the psychology of doing a 30-minute match is completely different than doing a 10-minute match. And it's actually, it was easier for me to do a 30-minute match than I thought. I felt more comfortable. I didn't feel like, I think I had more time to breathe and relax. So I think that helped me a lot now. Like this has been my best year for wrestling, as it should be going forward. But... I definitely feel like I'm comfortable in the ring now. It's good. It's good. It's been kind of fun to watch you grow uh, uh, over there at Rise Wrestling. That's Rise with a Y, by the way. Um, a lot of that. We actually just posted the um, October show. Right? Is it the October show, which was Lawless the and yeah, Lawless and Brandon Cage? Uh, I'm sorry, Brandon Cage. <laughs> That's somebody else entirely, I think. Um, but uh, I've been playing a lot of Mortal Kombat this weekend, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh no some really good stuff going on there great wrestling part of the rise wrestling plus we're throwing a lot of old pwo tvs over there um on the network uh the duke and does hardcore memories the uh breakfast with champions where we had uh the guy that beats you matt connard on there with the rise grand championship <laughs> and and jack pollock and i think they, they talked about a little bit about your match a little bit too yeah. you hit when he popped into rise and uh, lawless of course uh, so I hope you guys have been enjoying the gifts of people eating that I've been posting last week. <laughs> so, um, a lot of fun stuff going on there. And of course, a lot of good stuff, a lot of new stuff going on at IndieWrestling.us on VOD. 
Um, we just posted, um, about to post some more of the uh, classic super indies, just posted 16. I believe that's the one that had Adam Cole on it, is now on VOD, so you can watch that on whatever device or on your Roku or, or, or whatnot, uh, wherever you can get the Vimeo app uh, as a rental or, uh, or, or, or a purchase. Um, and uh, we also have brand new, we got Women's Wrestling with Angel Gate, and uh, coming soon will be Fight Society uh, with some interesting... <laughs> So, man, Beast Man and Brohemoth <laughs> going uh, everywhere, man. That is a sight to see. Uh, they, I saw on your Instagram story, Beast Man doing the cannonball off the uh, uh-huh, ring. Uh-huh. It's like, I would have moved. I, I moved. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I got the hell out of the way. Those, those five guys did not. Uh, so uh, it, it's a lot of fun there. There's a lot of great wrestling happening here, whether it be Rise Wrestling or our friends with IWC, RWA, um, or our friends in Cleveland with Premier Championship Wrestling, uh, also a part of the uh, Indie Wrestling.us network. So if you want to get a sample of that free trial, Indie Wrestling, uh, www.indiewrestling.network for your seven-day free trial, and you can sample all that stuff. And, of course, a lot of that stuff on Indie Wrestling.us on VOD rental or purchase. Go check it out. It's another great way to make it easier for you guys to get some Pittsburgh wrestling, Cleveland wrestling, Indie Wrestling, uh, all the way up there. Uh, everything go start start over at indie wrestling dot us okay guys so i had um there's a few things well first i gotta call out you know hey we always like seeing the local guy doing awesome things right elias was back in town probably in town for thanksgiving having the turkey with the family um and he visited uh upmc uh children's hospital Mm-hmm. and uh played guitar for some of the kids and everything so that was really awesome to see over the weekend that was like the that was like i think friday that came up and that was like the heartwarming um spot of the weekend it seemed um also i i don't know if you guys i uh, wish we we're, we're showing a little bit of here um have you guys i i ron killings has a new music video you guys <laughs> <laughs> lee you were watching it a little bit yeah <laughs> Uh, what do you think about that? You didn't even know Ron Kellings was doing, or our truth was doing uh, music outside of uh, WWE. I did not know that at all. Um, from what I saw, it was decent. I'll go home and listen to it. So yeah, it was. Uh, it's more than just the dance breaks that we're seeing on on uh, <laughs> WWE these days, uh, for sure. What uh, what is what is the song called, Sword? It's called. Uh, wait, I have it here. Well, one I, I do love that the one the one uh, album is called "Killing It" by Ron Killings. If you're looking that up on Google Music, it's Endurance or that's Endurance with a Z. Wait, Wait on. where's the Z? I uh, was gonna say where is it in? Hold on, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Sorg, don't, Sorg, don't tell us. Let's everyone guess. Where, where is the Z, Z on, the, on this one? Okay, I'm going to say the Z is taking place of the C in endurance. I'm going to say that it's taking place of the S and it's. What? Yeah, I think where the C is. E-N-D-U-R-A-N-Z. Nope, it's the less interesting one. It's that's. The yeah. S on that. Are you serious? The, as in that is endurance. So you could say that is endurance, I guess. Uh, no, it's a pretty good one. It's it's a good video, actually. We're we're kind of uh, watching and impressed by it um, here. Uh, Are you watching it on mute or just? No, it's good. It, 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 he can go. Okay. It's listen, man. He, R-Truth does not get to show his skills <laughs> when he comes out and and says "get rowdy" or whatever. Now, what hell is the song now? <laughs> People What's over up? there. What's up? <laughs> what's up yeah yeah like he comes out and does what's up or get oh. rowdy or whatever is he only allowed to do songs that have two words in the title yes because then the audience can go, oh. get rowdy what's up that's endurance well, yeah yeah I, if you, you follow Ron Killings on YouTube and you'll be surprised Ooh, I'd, I'd rather not you should you should it's it, it kind of makes Ooh. my day okay <laughs> I, I did I did what were we talking about? Like there should be like how does Ron Killings and uh, John Cena not John, done a song yeah. together, right? I like John Cena's uh, album he did yeah. like way back to like, I, right I now John and stuff. Album. I like those songs. That was um not, was it Track Addicts that did that? Or who am I thinking? I don't remember. Are you thinking of Bumpy Knuckles? Bumpy Knuckles? I know I, I knew Bumpy Knuckles. Trademark. Trademark was the yeah. trademark that was on that. Um so and, and I know he's popped up in a few other things since. 
uh, like, trademark. Yeah. Mm. Like he's always he's on a lot of claps. It seems at least for a while after, like, or at least on WWE 2K <laughs> the music. <laughs> like, hey, this is probably that guy that was on the John Cena album, of course. <laughs> right? And I forgot about the Wiz Khalifa John Cena mashup they did for uh, uh, 2K15. Did Did you forget about the the mashup that The Rock and White Club Jean did? What? I did forget about that. It's yeah. partially coming back to me. It's called Pie. No, I'm kidding. It's called It Doesn't Matter. I got a pocket full of trees and a car full of trees. It doesn't matter. That That's basically the whole song. Was that on Aggression? No. I, it was on... Not Aggression. WWE The Music Volume 5? I think. What? Hold on. Why Clef John was on a WWE music album? I yeah, so positive. I shouldn't be surprised because Three Six Mafia is on one for Mark Henry. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like that. that that's weird. <laughs> that that is strange because I know them as I know them from like like Juggalo shows, mm. you know. And then like, but hey, I see. Oh, was in okay, there. okay. Hold on. I was wrong and right at the same time. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> Wyclef Jean's song with The Rock was not on WWE The Music Volume 5. I don't believe so anyway. However, the song Pi does exist. <laughs> yep. And is on WWE The Music Volume it's 5. It's basically him just talking about different types of pie, isn't it? Do you know what? I believe so. And, and it's do like you a- know what else is on WWE The Music Volume 5? Rowdy by K Quick. It all comes together. It's all circular. <laughs> now I need to see where the "it doesn't matter" thing was. Um, Tina's saying it's on a. It was on White Club, a White, one of White Clef's albums. It was. It was just on one of White Clef's, I guess. Okay, that seems right. The eclectic. Okay, I guess so. That's what is that? The name of the album? That was the name of the album. Okay, you have to look that one yeah. up. Uh. <laughs> Jeez, uh, why am I? I have Alistair Black's theme up for some reason now. Big news on New Japan, Larry. What's the news? What, oh, your mic's off. What's the news? The news is um, Access, who's you know you know has been uh, carrying a lot of the uh, the Jim Ross related um, um, New Japan's. Yes, right. I don't know why we're redoing it with Jim Ross, but apparently we not, we're not anymore. They're not doing New Japan? The, well, no, no, they're doing Ju- New Japan, but Jim Ross isn't going to be a part of it. No, his contract's expired. His contract's expired. That's what's up. Yeah. So Access is kicking off same day, same week coverage of New Japan's with Wrestle Kingdom 13 on January 4th. So what they're going to do is have two hours of Wrestle Kingdom 13 broadcast on Access on Friday, January 4th at 8 p.m. We're, going to, of course, going to be sitting here in the studio at about 3 a.m. watching this thing yes. until like the trains start going by at 8 because it takes forever. Um, and we like we like our 40-minute championship matches in New Japan because, yep. uh, of course, um, so less than 24 hours, um, they're going to have those two hours of the show um, with uh, uh, Jim Ross and Barnett out here, according to the cage side seats we're reading. Uh, it will include com- the commentary team of uh, Kevin Kelly, Don Callis. So you'll be getting that primary team that you see on New Japan World, which is probably going to help with that turnaround time. So um, the rest of it will be the next week, basically. Yeah, the following two Fridays will be the rest of the show. Okay, if they're showing the, just the first two hours of Wrestle Kingdom. No, I don't think it's the first two hours. Then Is it? Th- it- I hope not. No. If, if it is, I well, I don't know. If it is, that's stupid. They're probably going to show the good two hours you want to see. Yeah, I would imagine. Hold on. No, if they're doing it three weeks in a row, they're probably just showing it. Showing it in order. Yeah, that's what I would. Imagine. So we're going to start with the uh, the gimmick battle royal that always kicks off the show. That probably with, uh, will not be on there because that's always on the pre show. It's on the pre show. Oh. So you're telling me the American audience doesn't get to see Scott Norton come up and almost kill somebody? It'll I'm be, saying because it'll be, sh- it'll be all tag matches. It'll be all Sorry, tag you matches. Know, you know what I'm saying? Hmm. The pre-show doesn't matter. Hey, man. Don't, <laughs> don't get me started on the pre-show. Even The Miz said tonight. He the did. Miz said tonight to New Day. He said your match didn't even count. He did. Well, then why'd they do the match? To get you the And as we've learned, 
The Miz is always right. Oh, oh. Miz lost, by the way. Miz mm. did lose. He lost his match at oh Survivor Series. That's right. Yes. I'm not saying he's a winner. Oh. I'm saying he's always right. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> Jeez. Um, but no, that, that it's good to see that that's um coming up here. Oh wait, they got. So they're going to do like New Year's Dash. New Year's Dash is the show like the day after, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So that's going to be like they're basically just showing everything in order. So instead of, so they're basically kind of catching up and restarting. Because your New Year's Dash is still going to be on a three week delay. New Beginning in Sapporo is going to start on February 8th. Well, yeah. the New Japan doesn't run shows every week. No, they don't. So that's that's probably why. So. There's probably just a lot of stuff they're skipping at the end of the year to get caught up here. Um, let's see. Wikipedia wants money. Okay, got it. Uh, <laughs> and that's not bad. That February 8th date isn't, isn't bad because it, the show is actually going to... Well, last year it was January 27th and 28th. So that is like a late um, January show. So, hey, more New Japan in America. It's good to see. They did do um, the, the American show live. Yeah. So, yeah. They do. They did. They do all the American ones live. I think it's just the time difference mm-hmm. is why they don't do the other stuff. Because you know. Well, plus that's a lot. Who's of watching for one network? Well, and who's watching Access TV at three a.m.? You know what I mean. I think that's when everybody watches Access TV. Well, that. that's when we watch Access yeah, TV. Yeah, just... But if they're trying to bring in new people to watch their network. 3 a.m. ain't the time to do it. Is, <laughs> is, is, is Access still like mostly this in MMA right now? Because that's, I don't know. I've never watched anything. Uh, you've never watched uh, anything yeah, but yeah. that show, right? I, did, are you aware? like that stuff and they play like live concerts. Okay. I so, think I haven't watched So it while. is it is still remnants of the old HD net that it, that yeah. it, that it converted. Let's find from. out. Let's find out. So let's fi- don't, no, don't accidentally put in Axio. That's something different. Um, put in what? Axio. That, that's... Because I was starting to get confused when they, that show came on, like HBO. It's about the news, not wrestling. Oh. Don't don't bother, don't bother. Uh, but no, good to see this stuff is happening. Um, it it was a light news week. Otherwise, it it was a light wrestling week. A light wrestling news week. Just, well, I mean, everyone's gearing up for the holidays. Like, there isn't a lot of stuff that happens around this. Like, as soon as Thanksgiving is done, unless we have Slammies to talk about. Oh man! And there are no slammies this year. There's no slammies. None? They're not in well, the books for anything. As far as we know, as far as we know, uh, they have not announced any slammies. Well, they usually I let you know the week be. before. <laughs> they could use the slammies without without um, their big hitters, um, you know, Braun and Roman and everything. Like they they could probably use the slammies, right? Yeah, we but, might get the slammy <laughs> show. The slammy show? Yeah. When they come here? Yeah. It's towards the end of the year. That's a well. It's going to be a SmackDown. They never do the Slammies on SmackDown. No, they only do it on Raw. Actually, have they done it since the brand split? Uh, That's a good question. I don't think no. they have. No. Hmm. That's a shame. Oh uh, boy, yeah. And then, well, this is the other reason we take the hiatus at the end of the year because it's like two weeks of taped, <laughs> taped uh, Santa Santa Claus street fights and. Uh, Did you like know that. Zelina Vega wrestles? Yeah, she's been yeah, wrestling. She, she's been wrestling on SmackDown. No shit. Yeah, did yeah. you know Zelina so Vega me. also she's got a concussion from Nia Drax? What's that? In the same night? <laughs> yeah. What the hell? Z- uh, Nia's not a safe wrestler. When did she get a concussion? During the but she 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 has the right family ties. Mm. During nah, the during nah, the fight nah. where uh, Becky got messed up mm-hmm. a couple weeks ago, apparently she also got messed up. What I didn't know. What that. was happening that night? Naya, was Naya wasn't herself. careful. I he, like she punched her. Like <laughs> yeah, I, I because, Lee, Lee, okay, Lee, you've been a few things. Uh, you've been punched wait, wait, before. Yeah, you, you've been you've been punched in the ring <laughs> before. I and actually, were you in the big battle royal as well? Did you make it out for that? Uh, which the uprising, the, the Guinness one. Oh no, I was I booked at another show. You, you, but you've it. been in battle royals before, yeah. right? Like I know it gets crazy when you have the big schmas there and everything, mm-hmm. right? I, I hear it's like the most dangerous thing you can do out there because there's so many bodies, right? Yeah, the most dangerous thing you can do is 
fall, like being laying down, like we're told not to do like suplexes, body slams, because you'll get trampled on, especially in that battle royal, that world record one. Yeah, yeah. There's ways to, like, I actually saw it, and like Christian, I don't know how he ended up falling, but then someone else did something off the top rope, and he, the guy landed on Christian. So it was like, Christian Noir. Yeah. That's scary. It's crazy. So, so it goes the Evolution Battle Royal. Tino was telling us. Oh, it was at the Illumin. Uh, okay, so it, it wasn't the same thing. No, but it was within a within a week or so of each other. How do you act? Like, you know, it was like a punch or something, or she, apparently she, when she got thrown over the top rope, when Naya just wasn't trying to protect her at all. Mm. Was Naya at Cause, NXT? Because Zelina is very tiny. She was. So. She was. Um, that that seems. Hmm, is it really is it really on her for protecting when you throw somebody out of a battle royal isn't that how did she go over like sometimes if you force somebody have no control that can happen because like um she might have done a gorilla press thing yeah i think it was out. a gorilla press yeah because yeah. Zelina tried to do the santino thing where she came up at the end she just threw so, it straight yeah. over onto like the ground it's possible. I, I think that's probably just the accident. It's not a good trend, man. It's it's not good. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, we'll see what happens with Naya here. Coming up, she'll get a push. She'll get a push. She already is. Yeah, she kind of is. Unfortunately. It, it, well, I mean, you know, Roman's not around anymore, so we have to push someone related to the Rock. <laughs> She, well, hey, she keeps showing up with the uh, Rock's mom. I'm not mom. joking. No, she was at Evolution. She was hanging out with the Rock's mom. Yeah, who is we like have, you know? You have to push someone related. Something I'm to, sure, but you know, the Anoa'i or or Maya Via family. We have to push someone. Mm -hmm. Family ties, man. That hey guys, um, you know, you know what? What is not questionable? Our good friends up here, uh, up the road at Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. Here at Beachview, Carnegie, West End, PNC Park, our good buddies that are uh, helping feed the guys are coming in here uh, on a, on a went Tuesday night to record the show. Uh, thank you so much for those guys for supporting us. Please, Gabe, do not kick the door down, but go check them out and uh, we, you know, uh, uh, let them know that uh, that you're coming because you heard about it on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And all of you guys, I know we got. A, a lot of West Coasters out there in the chat room and in the listening audience. What's all of you guys swinging into town for one reason or another? And uh, if you do, please go check out our friends there. They're all over town. Carnegie's right is, is, is on the way to the uh, the airport. Hell, we are on the way to the airport, just uh, pretty much off an exit here. Uh, go visit our friends over at Slice. SliceOnBroadway.com, PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters, and let them know the mayhem sent you. All right, guys, we're going to be coming back with a big question right after this. God, it's a slow week. Uh, the WWE changed the UK wrestlers' contract. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Larry, Larry, okay. Because I, I, okay. I have a story. All right, we, we're, we're trying to figure out this big question, and we're talking about WWE Originals, and we realized that, uh, Larry, I don't think you're familiar with this concept, are you? No, I'm familiar with uh, the Originals, like the documentary that they have on the network. That's about uh, it. No, oh, okay. So this, this, is, this is completely different. Mike, explain WWE Originals to Larry. Oh, I, I almost think it's better if he experiences it. it. No, because I I, I, I think just by the couple of things well, we said, we get, we his imagination is running wild with this already. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> um, so, Larry, what if I were to tell you that there was a whole album where the Dudley Boys, Stacey Keebler, Trish Stratus, Kurt Angle, Booker T, Eddie and Chavo Guerrero, and... Uh, Rikishi all sang their own songs. Did you mention Stone Cold? Stone Cold did not sing a song, sir. Oh, that's right. It was like a spoken Stone word. Stone Cold was the running gag throughout the entire album that he was going to sing a song, but he kept fighting with Jim Johnson and eventually hit him over the head with a guitar. <laughs> Audio leak. This was an album available. Oh, and, and <laughs> Tina, Tina's right. The, the Jericho song was on there, too. Don't you um, wish you were me? 
the king of all you see. Um, I will also mention that the Rikishi song um, was featured in a John Cena movie. It was in 12 rounds. Really? Yes. Uh, there's a scene. In, all right. So, uh, Larry, knowing what you know about Rikishi, what do you think the name of his song would be? I'm, I'm going to give you a hint. It's an R&B slow jam. Baby Got Back. You are very close. <laughs> it's, it's called Put a Little Ass on It. Okay. Yes. Put a little ass on it. <laughs> Put a little ass on it. Ass on it. Yeah. Um, so there's a scene in 12 rounds where John Cena goes crashing through a window and lands in some couple's hot tub. Oh, <laughs> when that happens, you hear it very, very minutely. Like it's what but, they were listening to. It's what they're listening to because in the hot tub, she was putting a little ass on it. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. L- Lillian Garcia also has a song on originals, which that makes sense. She's an actual singer. Yeah. And Ray talks about crossing borders. Essay. He's from yeah. California. He's from San Diego. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, it's yeah. a good thing they got him POD later. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was that was all an explainer to make sure Larry's up to speed because as we were talking about um, for the big question, what is a WWE side project you'd like to see? Whether it be originals or going to be Rod Killings doing like his own apparent rap career under the radar that nobody knew about. Um, <laughs> Uh, if, I don't know. I, I I get a lot of the divas trying to sell me Blue Apron these days on Facebook. Have you been getting that too? Selling what? Um, like those. I think it's Blue Apron, or it's one of those like they're Fresh Market or something. It's one of those mm. where I, a lot of podcasts advertise this. Um, where you pay a fee and and they send you a box with everything you need to make an actual dinner, uh, basically, and it's like good like ingredients and stuff. It's yeah. actually good for you. It's not like a microwave meal you'll get from like the uh grocery store or something right yeah so um, now i've done the ad for them uh, <laughs> yes. so i mean it's better when like alexa bliss is doing it but um but, but yeah so like what kind of uh, um, um side project would you be you can't say podcast unless you have a really good concept for a podcast well i mean you, you could have a really good concept for a podcast yes <laughs> um my, I, my idea is not that i would i would like to see you know how they do with like uh, professional sports, like uh, NFL or like uh, NHL. They'll put mics on the players. Mm-hmm. I would like to see that in reverse, where they have um, the people in like Gorilla or uh, the production truck mic'd up. <laughs> yes, the, you would for the rea- <laughs> for the reactions throughout the show. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. I would. I would imagine it's pretty entertaining. I bet it would be. That's mm-hmm. what I'd like to see. I think that'd be funny. I like that. I like that. My, it, my, it would have to be um, Raid Mature, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Like, like straight to the network, right? Like, it, it's like the director's commentary, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be fun. That's not that, like, man. After Kevin Dunn retires, maybe <laughs> he's been at it for a while. That could be his. Um, his day. Uh, oh, what, what were they called? The uh, 360 or 360, 360, 365 show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do a 365 of Kevin Dunn. Other production. <laughs> <laughs> what does it take to put on this show every week? <laughs> a lot of vodka <laughs> and one Sharpie. Huh? Mike, by, what do you by, got? By the way, Sorg, Oscar won. <gasps> yeah. Oh. TLC. TLC just became lit. Anyway. Uh, um, a side project I'd like to see. I mean, it's not really. It's I want to see WWE Crush Hour too. <laughs> you just want to see the game. Wait, wait, I, wait, wait, wait. Lee doesn't know Crush Hour. Uh-uh. What? All right, wait, wait, wait. Sorg, Are you break it out right now? Well, it's it's it's, it's at home. Okay, Damn. but I need to. Maybe you need to come over for a Brohemoth Invitational, and we're gonna play Crush Hour. <laughs> we're, yeah, okay. it's a game. So. It's a Lee game. Moriarty has the Twisty Rockets. Okay, uh, are you familiar with Twisted Metal? The like the car driving game with yeah. the clown. Nice yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So imagine that, but if all the cars 
were uh, fashioned after and driven by WWE superstars. Is this the thing where like the top half of their body is like on the cars? No, 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 no. They're cars. They're, they're cars? still cars, and they're in the yeah, cars. It's not like the WCW Sumo tr- Monster Truck. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, it's it's like and Jim Ross is announcing, and it basically it basically foretells the coming of WWE Network. Because this game came out in something like 2002, maybe? It's PlayStation 2. Um, it also came out for the GameCube, if that, if it that did. lets you know. There you go. There you go. Uh, and, and Vince McMahon has, um, um, has his own network and is looking for new content for the network. And then come up with Crush Hour and put the wrestlers in cars. Uh, so like a live action version of that? That'd be cool. <laughs> you, wait, oh, my wait. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. I revised my answer. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Real crush hour. Let's make it oh happen. Oh my God. Yes. Live action crush hour. Oh dear Lord. Yes. <laughs> we ha- the, the CGI exists. This can happen. Fuck it. Let's just make it Mad Max McMander Dome. It's gonna That's be, it. <laughs> it's gonna be it's gonna be WWE Death Race. <laughs> yep, I'm okay with that too. Yeah, yeah, these are good. Ideas. We already did the condemned. We're like halfway there. We just need to add cars. Um, that's a really good idea. <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I've never wanted anything more in my life. Now. Uh, Lee, do you have one? Would you like to see uh, outside the box? Uh, someone said in the comments like um, wipe out or those type of things. I like watch people fall. So mm-hmm. watching a bunch of wrestlers fall, trying to do something, <laughs> be pretty funny. Well, yeah, there was also like a, a Tino's talking about the WWE type, like American Ninja Warrior or American Gladiators. Mm-hmm. I mean, those guys are already in shape, you yeah. know. And- they did that when they did Tough Enough, didn't they? Yeah, and they put a bunch of obstacle courses on the but it's stage. The, it's and... the bullshit off the obstacle courses. And it's... plus, they had someone like ZZ on that thing. Like, yeah, like let's get oh, fucking like real athletes. Like, let's see, let's see Finn Balor do a fucking salmon ladder. All right, this, okay, this isn't a side project, but this is just something I wish they would do on the network or something. Just a tough enough. Where are they now? Mm-hmm. And let's start oh, yeah. with ZZ. Um, I, I can't even. Wrestling. What's that? I think he's wrestling. Is he really? I well, last time no. I heard of him, he was like an no, indie he wrestler in Florida. No, no, he's not wrestling for WWE. Yeah, he was an indie yeah, wrestler yeah. in Florida he's... or something. I don't so, know if he still is, but like last time I heard, I really him, hope he brings a live alligator with him to the <laughs> ring. It's only going to end so well. Uh, <laughs> he was young too. He was like nineteen or something, mm-hmm. so he has time to go back. I mean, he's he's at that age where he can still kind of figure his shit out, right, and mm-hmm. and do it the right way, right, and like click. Yeah. I mean, we we just had a conversation with with John Roden about how like he did not have the right attitude, did not have the right endurance, endurance or anything. And yeah, yeah, really. Um, and came around and look at him now, right? Mm-hmm. You know, he's fucking killing it out there. You know, see, you know what I want to see? Hmm. I want to see them do an America's Funniest Home Video show with like Zack Ryder as the announcer or something. Um, they with just there's... like botches in the ring. Um. There are a couple of videos called Bloops, Bloopers, and Body Slams. <laughs> well, you're talking about the VHS, like the old ones, right? Yeah, and they yeah, also no. had a DVD like around the Attitude Era hosted by Mean Gene. Yeah, like they, they oh, he'd they, be perfect. So it, it's more like it's more like um oh, what was the old show with the Clark, the the um yeah, bl- like the bloopers shows, yeah. like they used to do. That's basically what the tapes were. Yeah, yeah, um, like Titus sliding under the ring. Oh, yes. What sound? Of, and then we added sound effects and stuff. Put that right? do 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 do. You know the, the Benny Hill music. Yeah, yeah. Everything's better with Benny Hill music. Um, I need to see a Maven and Nadia, 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 Nadia show. Uh, from Dave Potter. Yeah, for the. Well, we know we know where Jamie Noble is. Wait, he wasn't tough enough though. Nadia was Jamie Noble's, Noble's just like, backstage girlfriend. Or yeah, yeah, Nadia. but but also, but where is she now? Right, yeah. like what's what's going on afterwards? Um, they already do like the the like where are they now on like the site for like just the general like Scotty too, like talking about how Scotty too hot he's like a firefighter and stuff yeah. too, right? So, um, but he's still doing it. Uh, Dave also wants to see a cooking show competition like Chopped. They have a they have a YouTube thing where Kathy Kelly's doing a cooking show with wrestlers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's talking kind of the thing. snack. Is that what it's talking called? snack? That's what it's called. Talking, Is that what talking it's called? snack. Yeah, so she's just cooking with like different wrestlers. It, they're, they're, so I'm glad to. I'm. I don't know. 
maybe this was just all being piloted for like the network or something, but they do so much stuff with their YouTube still, mm-hmm. right? Like like Ryder and, and Hawkins are doing a, a action like a toy show now, mm-hmm. uh, up up down down of course, which even some of that comes over the network it seems. Um, yeah, oh, but, yeah. Well, it, it, probably most of it's going to be on the network at some point. Yeah, so I mean, it's uh, uh, Seamus is doing a workout show. Is he? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, even Emma, before she left, she was doing a cooking show. Yeah. Yeah. Emma was... Yeah. It was weird. She was using her real name, huh? Yep. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, it, it's like it's like Woods. Yeah. Xavier yeah. Woods uses Austin Creed, even though that's technically not his real name either. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was watching the. I was just watching the Edge and Christian one, uh, for that too. Um. Sorry, I was I was getting a link from producer Missy, just making sure. For Tina said here. WWE Big Brother. WWE Big Brother. <laughs> <laughs> you think they'll ever do a reality show after Legends House? Um, I never watched it. No, you never watched. It? Oh man. No, I don't. Oh, was man. it like good bad TV type thing? I mean, it's as good as you wanted it to be. I think. Judging based on some of the stories we heard about Legends House, yeah, we we did have a people who made it. <laughs> yeah, we've had a producer. Like with the producer on Lucha Underground also produced that, and we've had, we've had him on talking about it. So it, apparently, it was pretty. Like, like I think they legitimately lost Roddy Piper for a little bit there. Yeah, what? like that night where like he goes out. Oh, well, you haven't seen it, but like, there's an early episode where he like walks out of the house and he's howling at the moon or something. They're like, no, I we think lost it's the first episode. I think it is first episode, right? Like he's adjusting to the house and everything. Like apparently, he did just like just disappear for a while. <laughs> Yeah, he just like wandered off. So, yeah. Uh, I but that's good TV. That's fun, you know. It's it was fun to see that, like that and and the guys like Hacksaw and stuff. If you haven't seen them at like you know all the signings and legend shows and stuff like that, like that's, I'd also like to see a WC a, a WWE like America's Got Talent show. Really? What? So, yeah, I, like singing. I could, like no, just like. Other talents that the superstars have that we don't know about. Like Kofi going out of the ring without actually landing on the ground? (laughs) Whatever the talent is. I don't know. I'm sure sure they can put together a few episodes. Yeah, that's probably something. There's probably something from that. I bet the big show's great at playing the recorder. Well, I mean, (laughs) like, well, no, but but, I mean, for, for reals, look at Elias. Mm-hmm. He's a talented musician. I'm sure there are others who can play instruments and shit. I'm sure there are some who fancy themselves vocalists. And Alexa and Dana could be on there. Dana like has legitimately competed in like powerlifting and stuff like that. Like, uh, but anyway, so uh, I think we got a lot of ideas, and you know, maybe somebody we know will. Slip something under our door uh, at WWE headquarters, and uh, <laughs> and uh, and maybe we'll see. You never know. It would, it's not wouldn't be the first thing that that it feels like they're listening to us, right, Mike? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No one's listening. No one. Cares. Nobody's listening. Nope. Uh, nope. But but you know who's listening? Our good friends at Occupy Pro Wrestling. Uh, and actually, uh, a couple weeks ago, of course, we know Joey Janela's uh, LA Confidential. Saw some insane wrestling action, but not without some casualties. And we're not just talking about David Arquette. Um, you know, uh, their 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 uh, brother uh, Marco Stunt out there was injured in a match and has a surgery. Uh, has to have has had surgery to repair a broken leg. He looks to uh, make a full recovery. But seeing as uh, we they both share uh, the love for Nickelodeon crossovers, Occupy Pro Wrestling and uh, Marco Stunt. Uh, Occupy Pro Wrestling is looking to help. 100% of all proceeds from uh, their merch at What a Maneuver and uh, shop.occupyprowrestling.com will go to their buddy Marco uh, now through the end of January. So if you want to help out uh, some indie wrestlers in need, uh, please go over there to Occupy or shop.occupyprowrestling.com and the What a Maneuver shop for them over there, and they will be uh, helping out Marco with his bills. So go check that out. Uh, <laughs> cool thing going on over there. So. Um, so we were talking about a little bit off break, uh, Lee, I, I, I didn't know about this, that WWE UK was kind of in a little bit of a, a thing about contracts. Oh yeah. So 
a lot of the UK wrestlers originally they can work pretty much anywhere in the Indies except for certain places I guess that refuse to get on the bandwagon of joining. Mm-hmm. So like I think Rev Pro UK was one of like the big places over there that degree like we don't want to work with you got not for any negative reason but they wanted to be their own thing yeah whereas progress wrestling icw places have signed on so now the new like updated contracts i don't think it's all talent but it's like a certain select group of talent basically you can only work in that small bubble now they don't want you working the indies and i guess reportedly guys were wrestling at shows there and getting hurt and they don't have doctors there. So it's going like undocumented. So when they would come to these NXT tapings, they like, they didn't know they were showing up with these injuries as far as I read. It seems to be like no requirements for doctors at wrestling shows there or anything like that. I I don't know. I've never wrestled over there yet, but I guess like the same as like wrestling in West Virginia, there's, you don't need a license. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So are they getting like, like I know the, the wrestlers on who are like they're like on retainer right with wwe they get they get like paid yeah they're, they're for w through wwe to not wrestle for other companies pretty yeah, much i think the are people, they getting like a raise or something since they're like now banned from all these promotions i guess so yeah that's what i read like okay well i mean if, people, they're, if they're still getting paid they're getting like upped. if they're getting paid more mm-hmm. Well, it, that sucks for the promotion it works out but it's always but, like I, i've heard like a version of a contract like ring of honor i don't know if that's what they do today mm-hmm. but there was like when you know ring of honor they're allowed to go do other indie shows but at a certain level they were kind of uh if you went and worked an indie show they took so much out of your pay and hopefully you're making more yeah. from the indie show. So you had to balance that. So you're not taking like bullshit bookings, mm-hmm. yeah. which probably helps ring of honor that you're not on some shitty show. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the long run, somebody that can actually take care of you. Yeah. But there, I think like ring of honor didn't even want you to work in certain places at all. Cause I remember, uh, Elgin, I think he was a ring of honor champion mm-hmm. and he was wrestling at PWG. And I guess he lost the match while he was a champion and they like saw that as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. So like for a while, certain people couldn't work there. And the same with um, people who were signed with TNA, they couldn't really work for PWG. Cause I remember TJP was in a match at Bell, so like Los Angeles. And the first thing the fans start chanting is like F TNA, F Dixie and stuff like that. Cool. Because like they wouldn't let their guys work there. Even now, like, Certain people can't work for Evolve now because mm-hmm. Evolve is their thing with WWE. So LAX was originally scheduled to be on the show in New York, and I guess they got pulled for Impact Wrestling. DJC's been on there, but he's been kind of part time yeah. with Impact. Like he's probably just doesn't have a fuller contract with them. Yeah, I think he's the longest tenured guy like there now with Impact. Yeah, that's if weird. You think about it. That is really weird. But again, he hasn't been like the guy that's been on like every week or anything mm-hmm. like that, right? Yeah. So and and I mean, geez, he's everywhere. You know, we, we've talked about that a good bit on here. Um, I don't know, man. It's, uh, it, it, but they still have, you know, like NXT, you see a lot of kind of faces pop up, mm. right? Whether it be an enhancement talent or something, but kind of significant, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know, was was Aleister Black signed when he popped up initially? Uh, on that like, like yeah. on the first on the first UK show? So, yeah, okay, so signed. that was that. But there, there, it seems like they, they are kind of like popping some people in. Mm. Right. So, but and, and again, I'm just getting started well, with NXT I, UK. I mean, yeah, and they're also looking to expand into other NXT divisions too. Like right. the next, the rumor is next is that they're doing NXT Germany. That makes why, sense. Germany, which is why they signed Walter. Tell me about Walter. I'm not familiar with Walter, so I don't really know too much about him myself. I just know he's like massive on the indie scene. Walter is basically he's in this group called Ring Camp. Okay. And it's um you watch NXT somewhat regularly. NXT I do. Just yeah. I haven't uh, started much on NXT UK. I haven't gone through the first episode yet. I'm I, trying. I'm yeah. trying. <laughs> I, a lot of, I don't blame you. There's wrestling. so much wrestling it's hard to keep up with. But it's, I don't so, want. but it's so great. I've been talking about this. It's been so great. Like I was a month and a half behind on NXT. It's mm-hmm. so like, all right, takeover's coming up. I gotta slam through this NXT. Yeah. It's not a chore to do it. Yeah. It's yeah, just yeah. it's it's so decent. Like the only weird thing is now I'm getting ads for pay per views from a month ago. Yeah. You it know, also so, helps that each show is only an hour. Yeah, each show is only an hour. It's not it's much not much of a slog to do it. It's just like I can just chunk this together. There's nothing unless there is a takeover or the, you know they have somebody on evolution or something or some weird mix up like that. Mm. It's compartmentalized, right? 
Yeah. Like missing Lucha Underground, other than the peer pressure of Mike and I trying to do a podcast, did not matter that you missed it. Mm-hmm. Right? It's, you know, or that we had somebody from the show on the show and I had to know what the fuck I was talking about. <laughs> so I was like, shit, I need to watch this. Um, but but really, it, it's just like, hey, I heard some of this stuff going on. You already hear that because this stuff is pre-taped like sometimes mm-hmm. a month in advance, right? Yeah. Especially what the UK stuff was. Mm-hmm. So, but anyways, uh, Walter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> we uh, we kind of tangented it. There's a guy in NXT is um, Marcel Barthel. I think he wrestled Keith Lee in Keith Lee's debut. But him, Barthel, and uh, Timothy Thatcher... They're in this group called Ring Camp, and they bring back like the traditional style of wrestling. Mm-hmm. So Walter wrestles this really traditional style, and one of his things he's known for is his chops because his hands are huge. And like, I've watched his progress matches, and he he busts people's chest open bad. Like they're black and blue, and every it's crazy. And like he's really good. Like he um over the top wrestling is a promotion in Ireland and they posted a free match with him. And Will Ospreay. If you've never seen Walster, that would be a good place to start watching okay. that match. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome, man. We should have started the show with this. This is far <laughs> more exciting than what we were talking about. Uh, <laughs> but again, of course it was announced in this past week that, uh, uh, NXT UK is, uh, doing our own takeover in January. Mm-hmm. So, um, that's, that, that's, Hey, that's the progress, right? Like that's that's uh, that's too uh, many things. There's too many things that Mike's gonna have to watch. Uh, <laughs> but at least there, at least there, it's more than just Monday Night Raw, right? Oh, it's too many things. <laughs> They're just gonna oversaturate. Just don't watch the stuff you don't like. Why do you watch Raw? Don't watch Raw. Well, um, some of us have to watch Raw. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess there actually was a call out in the chat room. I think it might have been Dave before um, we we did have a little bit of a glitch tonight, so we had to restart the chat room. Um, he, he was saying, uh, "Hey, can we get recaps of SmackDown next year instead of Raw?" You know, I <laughs> I'm not against this we'd, except for time. We'd have, we'd have to change the entire day structure of our show Man. smackdown's gonna be on fridays though yeah but i'm not doing a wrap-up on fridays it's going back to fridays <laughs> please yeah. i'm barely gonna watch it live on friday yeah like what's not even i got i got a life i gotta go out and live it's gonna be a pre-tape right i don't know what they're doing like no one knows pre-tape. yet no one knows really. we have a year to figure it no out no one knows yet it could be a whole different wwe by then you know I mean, we didn't think that they they piss off the entire world, but apparently they did. So who knows what's going to happen every uh, ne- ne- next year? But anyways, um, there. So so Lee, mm-hmm. we we we've been trying to help you out here on this show because you're a friend <laughs> of the show, and we were we so we need to get an update. Last time you were on the show, yep, we were concerned for you. Concerned for me. We are concerned for you. <laughs> we were just just your presentation. You're very happy. You're smiling right now, damn it! You can't. I don't. I don't think you can stop this. Okay. Stop Ronda Rousey. But like in the Avengers movies, the Hulk was his secret. He was always angry, yeah. but you couldn't tell. So it's the same thing. I'm always wait, scary. Wait. It might not look like it. I'm always. But, <laughs> but it's there. It's, he, he had a pretty good angry face when we were talking about Samoas. Yeah, because oh, Matt so he just a hater. He just needs the right trigger. He just oh, needs, so. So should I go off again about, about how, how Samoas are, are the, terrible and you're terrible. literally the <laughs> worst brand of Girl Scout cookies? You're wrong. Those little whatever shortbread ones are the worst ones. Whoa. No. Oh, no. Oh, Trade yeah, Bells yeah. are fucking delicious. No, no, no. Here we go. Here Trade Bells are fucking delicious. You dip them in a little milk. It's just milk. a really thick They're cracker. They're fabulous. Not, uh, <laughs> but we were trying to help you out. and We were, we were trying to teach you lion face, lemon face. <laughs> and 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 I, you know, as we've been conversing on social media, I believe you've been working on it. Are you ready? Right. Are you ready for this? Ready. Okay. All right, we're going to hit you with some quick hits here. Okay. Are you ready? Ready. Lion face, lemon face. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's roll this back. Have you tasted a lemon since we talked to you last? Kind of. I put that like lemon extract in my water. Okay, like, that counts. You know, okay, so you, you get know, it the, now. The Girl Scouts make a delicious lemon snap cookie. They <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try this again. All right, lemon face, lion face, <laughs> lemon face, lion face, lemon face, lion face. That's not bad. That's not bad. He's getting better. He's getting better. I have a feeling yeah. the next time he's here, he's going to have it down. Oh, yeah. There's oh, definite yeah. marked improvement. 
Definitely, definitely, very well. Uh, you've been you've been you've been hitting a lot of a lot of you've been all over the place, man. Oh, trying, yeah. Tr- trying to get out there. That was my goal. Morgan Welterweight Rise Wrestling is rolling, of course. Yeah, you were. Um, I don't think we've had you on since uh, what 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 was the final name when you guys were doing the Miami Vice night with Sunny Vice? I don't think we decided it. It was either Miami Lee Vice or Moriarty Vice. I don't think we had like a vote or anything yet because we haven't tagged since then. Mm-hmm. That's a to. damn shame. Yeah, <laughs> these guys come out as a team. They're wearing. You guys are wearing like flower shirts. You had like water guns, and I think you came out to the Miami Vice theme song. We came out to James Ingram's "A Better Way" from the Poli- or Beverly Hills Cop soundtrack. Yes, because Beverly Hills Cop is one of my favorite movies, which has made me want to do that gimmick. Because I'm eventually I'm going to drop Lee Moriarty all together and be Detective Axel Full Lee. Haha, <laughs> get it? See Lee? Yeah. You look confused, Larry. <laughs> I'm sold. <laughs> sold. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, Rise Wrestling coming up uh, this weekend. The anniversary show. Again, you've been a part of it since the beginning. Yeah, first show. That's right. Rise, first Rise champion. Mm-hmm. Grand champion. Uh, what's going on with uh, you? What are you doing on the show? This Saturday at Stronghold, I am going to kick Derek Direction, a.k.a. Mr. Potato Heads, head off. So some lucky fan is going to walk away with a souvenir, so bring your catching mitt. Because for over a year, Derek Direction has been whining and complaining and interfering in my business. He stole my championship, defended it at Mega Wrestling in Ohio, even though he wasn't the champion. He kept running and running and running. And eventually, I went out to Ohio. I competed on a Mega show, and I found him before the show and knocked him out. And I'm going to do it again. Because 18 months is way too long to deal with this guy. I'm done with it. Uh, he made you go to Ohio? He didn't make me. That's I chose to go to Ohio. To ass. I just got, went a little earlier so I can beat him up before I had my match. <laughs> there you go. There you go. 18 months is a long time for a feud. It is. Especially in indie wrestling. <laughs> 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 but it's gotten... It's it's helped me a lot because indie wrestling is very much like right now is real quick. So being able to do this for over a year, mm-hmm. it's helped me get better at certain things. Like uh, a few weeks ago, he and I went back and forth on Facebook with like stuff. Like he he called me a green bean. What? So because I am a very lean athlete. Okay. And I'm newer to wrestling, so green. So he okay. called me green bean. Ha right. ha ha! Right. Not funny. Then <laughs> you're making friends out the window. <laughs> oh, wait, what just hold on? That was the best mean face he's done. <laughs> and then he automatically just switched it to wave at those nice people outside. <laughs> I have layers. You have layers. You're an onion. Like you're an not onion. a green bean. You're That's an right. onion. He's an ogre. And then I d- decided to draw a Derek direction. It's Eric Cartman from South Park. <laughs> he drew me as Starvin Marvin from South Park. And then I learned how to do that like bad tracking thing where you put someone's face over a video. I literally learned it just to mess with him in like 20 minutes before then. But we've been going back and forth and like it's helped me get better. But now it's time to end it and shut him up. Now that you've learned all these uh, sweet After Effects yeah. skills, it's time to move on. Yeah, that's it. That's awesome. Big show, of course. Um, big Pittsburgh match. Uh, Brandon K and Super Hentai. Yeah, that's that's something to look forward to, right? That's the match I always just hear people talk about, like BC Still and everyone, like when they were fans or like referees and training. Everybody talks about that match, so I'm excited to see that. I'm hoping my match is either like a couple before or a couple after, so like I can like sit down and watch it. Mm-hmm. So that's like a good match for me to watch. It's gonna be a big one. Uh, Chris Hamrick of uh, ECW fame is gonna be there as well. Uh, I think he's doing a seminar before. If there's any wrestlers in the audience that want to go check that out, look for information on the Rise Wrestling uh, Facebook page. Um, hey, uh, guys, we got some breaking news. <laughs> As, I think you saw this. Yeah. It's only partially has something to do with wrestling. Um, breaking news, the XFL has announced that its first city to have a football team will be St. Louis, Missouri. The hotbed of entertainment. <laughs> I don't. I don't know why the Rams left there. 
Yeah. So there's your fill in right there. Um, well, what what do we think they're gonna call the St. Louis football team? The Bams. <laughs> Just gonna be a little caveman with a club. <laughs> Beastman could be the uh, mascot. Yes, there you go. There you go. Yes. Oh, jeez. Uh, Did you hear that they uh, they had a got a lawsuit from Adidas? What? Alpha Entertainment got a cease and desist from Adidas because their logo looked very similar to the Adidas logo. No way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You yeah. got to look up the logo for Alpha Entertainment. It, oh, I'll have to. Yeah. It was stupid. <laughs> it's like, did we even try? Like, don't you have lawyers? It was bad. Wow. It was really bad. The St. Louis Lambs. The St. Louis oh, Lambs. God. I like it. <laughs> oh, geez. This is good. Uh, St. Louis Ramrods. Mm. Ramrod? Mm. Uh, so San Diego Ooh. next XFL. Will, 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 yeah, that's actually, it. no. That's it'll it. probably be like the St. Louis Batterers. It's awful, right? It's That's horrible. Pretty much the Adidas logo. <laughs> <laughs> it's just uglier. Well, it's just not like the Supreme It's, it's logo. not memorable at all. No. It's bad. I just learned about the Supreme stuff. You, so, you know about this? Yeah, I... I I mean I only know it because that one guy used to be on 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 Daily Show has a show on Netflix and he talked about it. I what like it and hate stuff? it. Like it's way too much. I'm not spending that much money, but like they no. um, it's a brand and they 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 kind of cop a lot of other designs somehow. Pretty much, yeah. And Wu Tang has an album called Liquid Swords and or not it was Jizz's album basically, but um, they released a whatever the word is like a shirt mm-hmm. Supreme and it was like eighty dollars or something. And it's like it why for what but the, it's basically a uh, place for hype beasts to get clothing hype beasts hype beasts or people that will buy a product because it's popular no matter what the price is so like yeezys how they only release a limited amount and people resell them so they'll pay 500 dollars for some shoes that were 100 dollars just because they're cool or popular in right now that's what a hype beast is i'm learning so much from you right now <laughs> yeah I'm young, so I know. I'll see yeah, how does that apply to wrestling? I don't know. What would be like a hype beast? In a hype beast in wrestling. Yeah, like, Enzo Amore was a hype beast. Oh, hundred percent. Oh, that's but we're talking about a Survivor Series or previously. Previously, okay, yeah, okay. He's probably still one, but yeah, <laughs> he was a hundred percent. That was him. So if I hear hype beast, I I need to mention Enzo. Yeah. Okay. And any wrestling fan that you talk to. They don't know what hype beast is, just say Enzo Moore. Oh, okay. okay. I get it. Yeah, because I have a feeling most in my greater audience probably won't. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> at least that I interact with, I think. Um, Supreme's okay, but it's not, I'm not paying $50. Uh, well, yeah. Well, meanwhile, this should have been a, a backup big question um, in the chat room. Um, um, they're guessing um, upcoming XFL names. Uh, the San, San Diego Charizards, the St. Louis <laughs> RKOs, the San Diego 619ers. The Iowa Kingslayers. Shit, these guns are good, guys. Uh, the Cincinnati Lunatics. Uh, none of none of the XFL team names are going to have anything to do with wrestling. You know they say that, but we can still dream, right? That, have I dream like of one. much better things. <laughs> What's that, Lee? They got at least one name, like the Smoking Skulls or something. Mm-hmm. Seattle Goat Faces. Uh, thanks, guys. Alex, Dave. Uh, um, other Alex, Dave. The parts unknown yetes. What city is that? Parts unknown. Utah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> hey guys, uh, go check out. Hey, you know a lot of action happened here in the neighborhood. It seems like we're attracting a lot of wrestling, including the Lucha Fiesta Pittsburgh that happened here back in September. It's still available on iPay per view out there on Fight TV. Go check it out. It includes a uh, featuring Ultimo Dragon, Sam Adonis. Bull James Shocker Caristico, that's the formerly the, the original Mystico and original Sinkara, and so much more. Um, now playing over on Fight.tv. Go check it out and uh, support Lucha Wrestling over there. Watch it. It was literally like being back in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. It was a good vibe. That's what I keep yeah. hearing. It was fun. Yeah. And like a few days before, I trained with Ultimo Dragon at a seminar in Ooh. Cleveland. And then getting to see him like right across the street, like do his entrance with the music was super cool. Like me and Phoenix were just sitting up on that little ledge watching. It was really cool. And then we saw like what was it? Uh, 
Caristico do the dive to Bucanero and hit the fan right behind. Mm-hmm. That was crazy, but it's a really good show to watch. <laughs> like Sam and Don's put it on, and it was really mm-hmm. good. It was a lot of fun, and then and, and it sounds like we might be doing it again here for uh, Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. So look out, oh, look out yeah. for info for that. I'm hearing good vibes on the, on that maybe happening again. So, and of course, they did the, they did the, they toured it in Japan. Oh yeah, I did they did see the they did like three that. dates with Ultimate Dragon and and uh, everybody and Sam Adonis over there. So it really was like a, a big worldwide thing. They started right here in Pittsburgh. So yeah. awesome. Uh, it's time to find out, guys. What did you? Charlotte Nature Boys. Uh, what did you <laughs> learn from pro wrestling this week? I learned I need to reconsider my Mondays. Wow. I, I Dude, I wow. am so bad off of Monday. Oh, man. I'm so mad at wrestling on Monday. I can't, can't. <laughs> Listen, this, this is what I said last night. I, I learned that if it wasn't for everything else seemingly in wrestling being really great, you know, be it at NXT, be it SmackDown, be it... it NXT UK, which I barely started, you know, Lucha, Fight Society was awesome on, on Saturday, right? You know, Rise Wrestling this weekend is going to be amazing. Um, you know, like everything, Impact's doing fun stuff. Sorry, Mike. <laughs> Agree to disagree. Oh, come <laughs> on. That is not what. <laughs> They're doing interesting stuff. I mean, just, just the Impact convers- has good Impact has good talent. That doesn't mean they are necessarily doing fun stuff. Well, 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 I can't get into that right now Um, (laughs) for reasons, Um, you know, but like seriously, like everything else wrestling is so great right now that I hate that Monday night (laughs) is like the bottom of the barrel, but the most watched bottom of the barrel, you know. It is. So you're saying it's the largest quantity of crap like out there for professional wrestling. It is. Like you know how <laughs> you know how we, we you know we've had this conversation off air about I I don't want people their first wrestling show to be certain indie wrestling promotions because yeah. I don't want them to think that that's what's that re- that's what wrestling is. Yeah. Mm. I don't want those people to first watch Monday Night Raw thinking that's what wrestling is. I want them to watch. I want them to tune in Tuesday nights. You know, I, I or that or, should have been our big question. What would be the first thing you'd show a new wrestling fan? Mm, wow, that's we'll we'll hold that for next week. Um, yeah. But no, I mean that's that's they've done it to me. They have turned me into Mad Mike, <laughs> which is fun because your name is also Mike. <laughs> 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 the singularity is complete. <laughs> gobble 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 gobble. One of us. One of us. It took 14 years for the process to complete. Now I'm an angsty wrestling fan. That's a long gestation period. That is long. I resisted for so long. For so long. Uh, Resistance geez. is futile. Execute order 1331. That was the episode of Raw. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Oh, fuck, I don't know, man. <laughs> oh, you watched this Raw with me, wasn't it? Do, yeah. Come on, no, man. I watched I, some SmackDown. I sent you gifts and stuff, didn't I? What did I learn? Pat, come back so, to me. Side note, me. side note, I learned that uh, Matt Connor sometimes will miss his face when he's throwing Cookie Crisp in the air. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lee, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? I learned Jeff Hardy's been wrestling as long as I've been alive. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. And I've come to the conclusion that Derek Direction is also a hype beast. Oh, good to know. <laughs> uh, Mike, what'd you learn? Oh, I learned that uh, Samoa Joe <laughs> looks fetching in a plaid skirt. <laughs> <laughs> I really wish that, that Lunchbox still watched wrestling so he could, like, live in his wrestling world to see that moment it, we're due for we, another uh, we, we need to bring him back because oh man do we have some two truths and a lie for him oh geez uh, background dj lunchbox started the show with us 13 years ago and has left wrestling as a whole uh entirely just has stopped watching it and we would just kind of tell him them tell him what happens mm-hmm. and it's just so unbelievable for somebody who has not watched wrestling for the last four years uh, maybe more than four years at this point. Jeez, he's been gone for a while. We mm-hmm. miss you. We miss you, LB. 
And Samoa Joe was like he he told us about Samoa Joe. <laughs> like he he he's like, hey, there's this guy in Ring of Honor, Samoa Joe, and he came up to TNA, and and we were being informed, and then mm. Samoa Joe happened. Uh, <laughs> so, anyways, um, Larry, do you have one yet? Uh, come back to me next. Oh, week. We come back <laughs> to you next week. I don't know. Jeez. From the chat, Alex Miller learned that I love David Arquette. Bleeding live was glorious. It's not a pay per view, and Icelandic pro wrestling is great. Icelandic? He's in like Iceland. 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 See, I hear Gre- Ice- Greenland is very nice, and Iceland is not. No way. No, so Iceland they're way around. Nice around yeah. Yeah. Greenland is covered with ice, and Iceland is very nice. Mm. Dave Potter learned that Mad Mike has no taste in cookies. No, I have yeah. great taste in cookies. Mm-hmm. Alex learned that. Look at look at my physique. Does it look like I don't have good taste in fucking cookies? Come you on. Probably now. eat the thin uh, Oreos, Alex. the ones that are like extra thin. The thin Oreos. So what's the point of eating Oreos? Why are you eating them? Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what. I don't have an answer. <laughs> I don't have an answer for that either. Exactly. So uh, make them. Alex Carr has learned that um, that we can get Jordan Grace versus Brian Cage in hope in Impact. Hopefully, yeah, she just started with them. Yeah, but they're, she's they're having a wrestle knockouts. Do they do intergender in Impact? I don't think they really have, but I mean, when they see a trend, they, they, they don't, usually they roll don't do, with it. They mm-hmm. don't do intergender there. No. But hey, you never know. You never know. It's owned by a different mm. company now, so maybe that yeah, is true. Um, she's. I'm sorry, I, I rolled back into the XFL names. Um, <laughs> nothing, nothing educational this no, week. No, I learned nothing from no, wrestling. No, nothing. Week. <laughs> Producer nothing. Missy learned that not being surrounded by wrestling 24 seven is weird. They're not wrestling fans. What's that like? like? Yeah, what is that like? What is that world? What is there? that like? Is she even gonna? Is she gonna like not like wrestling when she comes back, or she's just gonna love wrestling when she comes? I mean, back? to be fair, we don't like wrestling. Well, don't. <laughs> Don't let her watch Raw. Yeah, no, 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 I may divorce you. Uh, what the hell? That that took a turn. Anyways, all right, uh, guys. Uh, Lee Moriarty. He is wrestling this weekend at Rise Wrestling. Get down there, Lamont Furnace, PA. <laughs> what is that? What are you? Are you doing a? F- this is the thing from Napoleon Dynamite. Oh, it's the bird it? thing. Or it's Wu Tang. Or it's Wu Tang. Wow, that's so close. Um. <laughs> Mike's doing it too. I do. I do it too. Yeah, Mike's got it too. <laughs> uh, they do. You, they do have common ground. Where, where can people had a bad wing? Where can people find you online to uh, see stuff about this weekend and also your uh, South Park animations? Uh, Lee Moriarty on Facebook, Apex of Combat on Twitter and Instagram. Also check out Rise Wrestling on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter, as well as their YouTube because I'm pretty sure they're going to start uploading more. And being more active, you might even see some of the uh, exclusive highlight hype trailers that we use on the shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, by the way, I got to shout Lee uh, does some of that work. Yeah, me, and Marcus Mann, and Jordan Allen. We really go back and forth. Like yeah. like really great stuff. Like I, I love Thank you. I love seeing like like the stuff that you guys are putting out. Um, I, happy happy that it's using our footage. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, and 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 you edit in After Effects, which blows my mind. <laughs> That I have Premiere, but it's I have to like sit down and learn it again. I know. Well, you learn your rapper way around yeah. one way. I mean, it's like, it, it, you know, I think it's akin from what the, my my little knowledge of learning wrestling here and learning mm. like lucha wrestling. Yeah, you know, like how <laughs> it's like kind of like. Well, I know the concept, mm. but I don't know this version of the concept. Yeah, that's After Effects versus a Premiere versus a Final Cut, right? Pretty, yeah, basically. So, <laughs> Good. I'm glad I'm not off on that. <laughs> but uh, anyways, upcoming events. Producer Missy is keeping me in line from California. Please um, wait. Where are they? Where are they? Uh, I know this week we are 
we are uh, uh, doing some uh, interviews on Thursday. It's going to be on the IndieWrestling.us uh, page feed. Uh, we will be talking with Bronco McBride at 7 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday. And then we will be talking with Marshall Gambino, who is starting the new Prospect Pro Wrestling this next month. And I believe we're going to have a guest, a uh, f- favorite of the Mayhem show. Jimmy DeMarco is going to be joining him. So I, he's making a comeback here in so Pittsburgh. So that episode will not be for children. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not. We did put an explicit on that one. Um, but uh, that's happening. This weekend, like I said, the Rise Wrestling, uh, we will be there with Indie Wrestling for recording. And uh, several shows coming up. Please uh, look at the calendar at PittsburghWrestling.com, including there are dates up already for at least three or four promotions uh, for 2019. Make your plans now <laughs> for these, right? That's right. Lee's, Lee's pointing. The Uncle Sam thingy. We want you. We want you to watch more Rise indie wrestling. Right, yeah. Yes. Right. At Rise Wrestling. Go check it out. And, of course, you can check out everything with Rise Wrestling at IndieWrestling.us for the back catalog here uh, as well. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Producer Mini. Mini? Thank you, Producer Missy out there in Sorgatron Media West. Larry, Lee, and Mad Mike. We'll see all you guys next week right here. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. 